so, um, are you guys familiar with Portal 2? Portal 2 is Portal one what? of the best games of all time. <laughs> okay. Just making sure. Are you familiar with the final hours of Portal 2? Not like the last gameplay hours, but the title called The Final Hours of Portal 2. No. No. So, Jeff Keighley, um, the uh, host of the Game Awards, the Dorito Pope, the man himself. The Dorito um, Pope? These... What? That's, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting demoed by Windows 98. It's, this is like being in IT all over again. Um, but anyway, so uh, the final hours of Portal 2 uh, is a project uh, by Jeff Keighley, and he has done a lot of these, the final hours of XYZ. Um, they are tiny little documentary series dealing like the inner workings, the development, the making of various games that he likes. Uh, the first one he did was on Half-Life, where he emailed Gabe and said, hey, you guys are putting out a game. I'd like to get into games journalism. Can I just hang out and, you know, check stuff out? They're like, yeah, uh, bring a camera, bring a, bring a tape recorder. Like, just come on down. Uh, Valve was a really tiny company back then. Um, and he did this documentary series, uh, basically a giant series of interviews and everything else, chronicling the final hours of the development of Half-Life. Um, and that has turned into this massive making of series that he uh, he makes on relatively few games, basically games that he personally loves. Um, oh, so Valve the final. Hmm? So far, you've ta- you've named Valve games. I'm like, he has his access for Valve, and that's Titanfall. it. He, okay. He's done Titanfall too. Um, I need to look at what else he did. They actually got pretty far into Bioshock Infinite, um, but that was shut down uh, for a variety of reasons that he could not legally go into um so there's there's a lot of games that he does this too um but the final hours of portal 2 was this cool little interactive storybook giant it's it's quite literally a book but with a bunch of little interactive elements a bunch of slideshows a bunch of pictures models you can interact with beta footage videos um and this came out for half-life alex um, so it's cool, like learning about how a game is made, like the stuff that they tried, the stuff that didn't work, the stuff that got left on the cutting room floor. It's all kind of well and good. But the more important thing that this game chronicles is the last 10 years of Valve software. All their hardware projects, all the canceled shit, exactly why they haven't put out goddamn anything except shitty card games for the past 10 years. Oh, is this yeah, what? He- is this where everyone's getting like the information that, hey, there was a Left 4 Dead 3 and it was canceled? Yep. Yeah. Yep, okay. yep, yep, exactly. Um, all all of those those exposés that you're seeing on IGN, on VentureBeat, on everything, you know, oh, Valve had five different projects named Half-Life 3 or set in the Half-Life universe. That is from this exposé, um, which it's calling it an exposé is probably, probably bad. That implies some things, but it comes from this Valve-sanctioned, uh, you know, interactive storybook. Um, so it's really interesting um the uh the valve index was not their first try at their own headset after they worked with htc they said well hey let's go crazy let's see what we can do um and they created this headset that would have cost five thousand dollars per uh per unit to ship <laughs> Dear and they Lord. said yeah they, it was called vader apparently they they're keeping a lot of the things under wraps that it could do but it is quite literally uh, one of the most expensive or the most expensive VR headset in the consumer space you could possibly imagine. So they shelved that and they took some of the stuff that worked and some of the stuff that was cheap and shoved it into the index, namely the uh, off-ear audio system. Yeah, that, that's, that was an interesting move. Yeah, it yeah. makes sense, but it was something I would have never thought about doing. But that's really not so a $5,000 VR headset. There are pictures. There are pictures. You can actually Ooh. see how they prototype this thing. Uh, and it's Valve is absolutely uh, subscribing to the hacker ethos. You can see like rough 3D printed parts with fucking breadboards and wires coming out everywhere. And it's it's really like shitty looking, but in a cool cyberpunk way. Um, nice. Yeah, it's it's really neat. Um, one of the things uh, that they did is they hired a uh, an audio engineer to go and try to build a new audio system, where's where this off-ear stuff came from. And she wanted to see if it would actually work. So her little demo was she took apart some computer speakers 
uh, screwed them into a skateboarding helmet, and then tested with that. Like, <laughs> super <laughs> shitty hacked together stuff. Uh, and that became the off-ear audio system of Vader and now the Index, uh, which is really cool. You get to see, like, the entire hardware prototype of these are literally just a, you know, a um, Steam controller with some extra shit attached to it um, to here's some 3D printed parts that are clearly, you know, rubber banded to winter gloves to the eventual Knuckles controllers we got. Um, it's a really, really cool look into Valve software over the past decade. And there's a lot of information in there. Um, now, if, uh, if you have not played Half-Life Alex, if you're avoiding spoilers, do not pick this up. It's 10 bucks, it's on Steam. Don't pick it up. It actually goes into story spoilers massively. So play through the oh, game first, okay. then get this thing. So just okay. throwing it out there. You got me yeah, excited about why... some cool thing to watch, and now I can't watch it. Yeah, well, it's it's less watching and more reading. It is 15 chapters of mostly text. There's a bunch of videos. There's a bunch of interactive segments. There's a bunch of um, soundboards uh, where you can make your own head crab sounds, uh, which is really cool. Um, and interactive models and animations. Um, like it is, it's a really cool project, and I kind of feel bad for only paying ten bucks for this thing. Okay, um, so here it is. Let's, it's great. How about you give us some of the deets that people are interested in that might be afraid of spoilers? Okay. Name some so, of the big marquee games that have been canceled that people might not know. They were building existed. a Minecraft competitor that eventually really? moved to VR. It was called Artie. And uh, it looks like it got shelved or, you know, got put on hold for Alex. I don't know if it's coming out. They were working on an RPG. Um, they were inspired by Skyrim and Dark Souls um, and, like, the storytelling of Baldur's Gate. Uh, they, they were inspired by a lot of these things and then wanted to see, okay, can we create a really cool RPG? And so they, they've run some experiments. There is a hidden project that they asked Jeff Keighley to not talk about, so he didn't. Um, and that means yeah, it's still ongoing, I would assume. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there are five different Half-Life 3 slash Episode 3 games that they have tried to launch and killed for a wide variety of reasons. Um, most of the reasons they killed those projects is because the Source 2 engine just wasn't ready. Um, they actually killed those projects because the tech just wasn't there. Um, even when starting Half-Life Alex, it was actually just going to be like a little shitty thing with Half-Life 2 models that, that might have been up one day. Like they, they weren't planning on this being anything big. And then the scope just kind of exploded, uh, which happens to every great product. Mm -hmm. um, but this exploded but, in a good way. Yeah, Not exactly. Not in a cluster bomb. Yeah, and what's what's funny is that the uh, the story was actually a massive pile of shit. Like people people rated the interactivity, the the graphics, the audio fidelity. Like playtest showed that people loved Half Life Alex. It was easily the very best Half Life game they had ever played on every mark, except story, where it was clearly the worst and worse than a lot of games. Um, like one one story had like some COD esque revenge plot super dark dealing with a lot of torture and bullshit and it, it just it's not half-life it is not half-life half-life tends to be goofier than that um and like six months before the game came out they actually hired back some writers uh, who had left because valve hadn't shipped fucking anything in nine years and they hired these writers back and they said please please fix this help us and uh, somebody came up with the idea. I'm not going to go into spoilers, but they came up with the idea that eventually became the story in an elevator conversation. Like one of the writers was like, man, I don't know. Like we can't tie this thing together. This end level, like I, it, it's just not working. We can't find anything. And the other guy's just like, well, why don't you just do this, man? We're like, holy fuck. Can we, <laughs> can we do that? Ho we can we can do that and it became the story of half-life alex and after those story beats were changed um the story hit uh the highest mark uh of any half-life game in playtesting for for story design nice. which was really cool the all i know is out of all of that what made me really really sad is they killed off left for dead three um kind of but not really um, so the development strings of Left 4 Dead 3 uh, are still 
They're still in the Source 2 engine. Stuff is still happening. Stuff is still being worked on. Um, the, there are tons of leaks out about Left 4 Dead and having a uh, a possible VR tie-in. Um, so yeah, they're, they're working on a bunch of stuff. Uh, what got me really excited and really what got the fans really excited is that at the end of this documentary, you know, not getting into spoilers again, um, you know, people at Valve said, yeah, we're, Alex showed us that we could do Half-Life. We're no longer afraid of this thing because if, if you have a game with kind of the, the anticipated quality of Half-Life 3, how do you even begin to meet that? Like, how on earth do you begin to create something that is not going to piss off your entire fan base? And everyone was just too afraid to touch it. Like, how do you how do you eat that elephant? Uh, it turns out with Alex, the, the answer was one bite at a time over four years. Um, they were afraid of pulling a micro or a bungee with Halo. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because, you know, Halo set a really fucking high bar. How do you do better than that? And it turns out, yeah, it's really fucking hard, especially <laughs> yeah. when you're on a deadline. Um, but, uh, at the end of the documentary, people said, yeah, uh, we're not afraid of half-life anymore. We, we can do this. There's, there's more coming out. Um, you know, when, where, how, what it deals with, is it VR? Is it flat screen? No Will information be whatsoever. Years. <laughs> yeah. No information whatsoever. Uh, but as of right now, Valve is back in the business of half-life and I could not be more excited. 